We're just a few days away now from Grand Blue Fantasy Relink's release, and fans of the franchise and even new players alike are excited to get their hands on and play this massive game. From what we've covered so far, we think Grand Blue Fantasy Relink will have a lot of exciting features that will mostly focus on character progression and end game activities. In this video, we'll be breaking down things that we know so far concerning character customization and progression. Judging from the recent gameplay and demo that Side Games released, there's a great importance placed upon Grand Blue Fantasy Relink's overall character progression and customization. Even though there were a lot of features that were inaccessible in the recent demo, it's easy to see that the majority of our hours will be sunk into character progression and team composition. Let us remind ourselves that each character will have their own progression and will have 18 playable characters on release. So it could be one of those games that we'll be playing for a long time while also enjoying an engaging gameplay loop. What puzzles me though is character masteries. In their recent live stream, Psy Games has shown how the system works and its progression. Players will be able to unlock nodes that were laid on diversified upgrade paths. The whole system looks like a massive skill tree and according to Psy Games, to unlock more stats and skills, players need to go through the said system. And from what we've seen in the recent live stream, there were three tabs in the mastery system. Each of them has their own percentage, indicating each of the tabs mastery progress. This could be huge, and from the looks of it, it will take players a significant amount of time to max this system. In the footage, notice that the party are getting MSP, or mastery points, when the character levels up. But look closely as leveling up only provides one mastery point, and each mastery node requires about five mastery points on average. From what we can get out of this, masteries will drastically affect the character's efficacy, and their skills and passives will be more effective in general. We can also see in the live stream that the developers tried to unlock an attack stat node which provided plus 5 attack stat, or a node which somehow affects link time. It is possible that this specific node strengthens link time duration. Link time is one of the key aspects in combat in terms of dealing tons of damage to enemies, so it's interesting to see that we can strengthen it through our mastery. Mastery is just one part of character progression in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink though, and weapons also play a part. In the recent demo, we were able to play with two weapons per character in total. Each weapon had its own stats and traits to play with, meaning choosing the right weapons when min-maxing builds will be a thing. Fortunately, Psy Games has provided a glimpse of how weapon upgrades works in the game. Players can upgrade each weapon by using various materials obtained from quest rewards or monster drops. When a weapon reaches its level cap, it undergoes limit breaking, which requires rarer materials from the field. The livestream confirms that weapon upgrades can go up to level 150, and players will need to put a lot of time to achieve this. It's likely that each character will have more than two weapons, so there will be a lot of weapons to upgrade. As mentioned previously, each weapon has their own stats and specific traits, and judging on how sigils and traits work, which I'll be explaining later on, weapons will have the same trait variations like sigils, which corresponds to its actual type. The weapon types that we have in the demo pretty much gave us an idea of how further customization can be done by just using a different type of weapon. Let's go over these weapon types really quick. First is the defender type, which provides the HP trait. The Stinger type adds critical hit rate trait, Executioner type governs weak point damage trait, and the Stunner type provides stun power trait. It is likely that characters will have more than 4 weapons on release, and I don't think DPS characters will only have Defender and Stunner types of weapons, since they will be needing an offensive trait on at least one weapon type. You can see from this that weapon stats are not the sole basis of their usage. It's more of what trait matches the build that you're going for at the end of the day. For instance, if a player aims to create a critical theme build, of course they'll be choosing the Stinger type of weapon, since it can easily provide critical hit chance. As early as now, you can see the possibilities for build variations that players can come up with, thanks to the different weapon types. And just like weapons, sigils offer a unique way to enhance your character's abilities. They provide additional traits that can greatly improve your character's effectiveness in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Each sigil corresponds to a particular trait. For example, a critical hit rate 3 sigil enhances your character's critical hit chance. There are various types of sigils available, each with different effects such as increasing your HP, boosting attack overall, and so on. More sigil types can be observed in the demo which govern defensive stats or resistances to a specific status ailment or sigils that reduce skill cooldown. Not only will players have the freedom to experiment with a wide selection of sigils, but they also have their tiers. The higher the tier, the higher the trait levels that are provided. Sigils can be upgraded as well. From what we've seen so far, it seems that players will be gathering materials to upgrade these sigils to increase their current trait level. It's a little bit crazy to think that we can stack the same type of sigils to reach higher levels of traits, and since players can equip more than 5 sigils at a time, the variations of builds will be extremely diverse. There's a plethora of character skills to play with as well in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Skills play a pivotal role in combat as most of them have unique effects, 
that players can take advantage of. Each character will possibly have more than six skills at their disposal, but they can only equip four skills in combat. These are mostly offensive skills, which deal direct damage to enemies or support skills that provide self-augmenting buffs or even party buffs, and just imagine how varied loadouts can be, especially if we're talking about 18 playable characters. In this fashion, players need to be strategic with regards to their party composition to utilize their skills effectively in combat. Party composition is a little lenient in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, especially in the early parts of the game, since players will not be forced to build their teams around elemental advantages. According to the developer's Psy Games, although each character has their own element, elemental weaknesses is more of a bonus and what they prefer is players will be able to use their favorite characters in most cases. However, I personally think that this is only applicable in the early stages of the game and possibly the most difficult raids in the end game will require elemental advantages. They'll be giving players a certain freedom to use who they really want till they reach end game, but as the difficulty gets higher and higher, elemental weaknesses will likely be prevalent in combat. When it comes to creating a good party composition, players should carefully build their team based on their character's skills. This is important when tackling end game content as the fights will be more challenging and will require a well-balanced functional team in order to succeed. Although there are no strict classes for each character, players can still determine their nature or playstyle by just looking at their kit. There are still going to be pure DPS characters, support type characters, and some characters that are hybrids. It is clear that players can't form just any sort of team without any synergy. A well-balanced team is still needed, especially when fighting endgame bosses. One good party composition that I find effective is having two pure DPS characters in the party while having at least two support characters. Off the top of my head, a good party composition is something like Charlotta and Rackham for pure DPS slots, having their skills set to pure offense. For the supporting characters, a Gran or Jita equipped with pure supporting skills like their Phalanx and Panacea. And lastly, Cagliostro is the main support who can also heal and provide more party buffs and even revive allies from critical condition. Having two DPS and two support is not the be all end all in terms of party composition, however. Another good party composition is having three DPS characters and one support. There are DPS characters that can buff the entire party, so this is not difficult to do. A sample of this party composition would be Zeta, equipped with Signo Drive to buff the entire party with attack buff, pick Eugen so he can inflict status ailments to targets with paralysis. Lancelot can fill the third slot for pure damage, and lastly again, Cagliostro for support. Players are of course welcome to try unorthodox party setups like having a full team of pure DPS, especially when playing in multiplayer, depending on skill levels and content being tackled. At the end of the day, it all boils down to how well they know the fight and its mechanics and whether it works for you or not. And since Grand Blue Fantasy Relink records the player's fastest clear times when completing quests, hardcore players will surely be going for these kinds of setups in order to get the fastest clear speed possible. So that wraps up our video on character progression and party composition in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. This will be our last video before the actual full launch of the game. The first video is going to be our review of the game, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. We're going to have that in a few days, and then we'll have some beginner guides on the game, as well as character guides for each character of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. What do you guys think of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink? Are you guys just as hyped as we are? Let me know in the comments below. We'll be right back.